Hi, in this lesson I will discuss on Blount's disease or tibia vera. Specifically, we will see on the definition of Blount's disease, types of Blount's disease, symptoms, risk factors for Blount's disease and the treatment and the outcome of this problem. Blount's disease is a progressive bow leg deformity due to abnormal growth of posterior medial part of proximal tibia. It's a condition found in children that affects the growth plates around the knee. The disease causes the growth plate near the inside of the knee to either slow down or stop making new bone. Meanwhile, the growth plate near the outside of the knee continues to grow normally. This results in a bow leg appearance in one or both legs. There are two types of Blount's disease, the infantile type and the adolescent type. When we see the infantile Blount's disease, both legs are relatively normal in children under age 2 and generally improve by 80 to 24 months. Infantile Blount's disease generally appears around 2 years, but the bone does not improve and instead worsens over time, unlike that of the uh, bow legs that occur in children less than 2 years, which is a physiologic one. This infantile brown disease occurs between the ages of newborn to three years, usually occurs in both legs or bilateral, and the deformities in the tibia, and more common than the adolescent type. When we see the adolescent brown disease, this occurs in children over 10 years of age and more likely to affect one side only, unlike that of infantile. And deformity typically occurs in both the thigh bone or femur and the tibia. When we see the symptoms of Blount's disease, children with Blount's disease will have bowing of one or both of their legs, a condition called genavara. In addition, they might complain turning of the feet, awkward walking pattern, knee pain, discomfort in the hip, knee and ankle region. Regarding risk factors for this problem, the exact cause of Blount's disease is unknown. Children with infantile Blount's disease are typically early walkers, that means before one year of age, and they are often overweight. So obesity and early walker is a risk factor for infantile type of Blount's disease, whereas adolescent Blount's disease may be related to rapid weight gain or obesity. There is also believed to be a genetic component. Blount's disease tends to run in families. The typical X-ray appearance of blunt disease include, as you see on the image, the tibia demonstrates various positioning with abnormal triangular epiphases, and the metaphase shows the typical medial oriented beak like osteopenic exostosis. Regarding the treatment, the goal of treatment for blunt disease is to correct the deformity and improve overall alignment of the legs. There are two types of treatment the non-surgical and the surgical treatment. The non-surgical treatment is for young patients with infantile Blount's disease, which is done by bracing. This bracing is effective for infantile type of Blount's disease. The goal of bracing is to guide the legs into a straighter position as the child grows. An improvement is usually noticed within 12 months of treatment, and if the deformity is not corrected, by the age of four, surgery might be needed. The other is surgery. Surgery for blunt disease is recommended if bracing doesn't produce desired results, and children with severe deformities and those who are no longer candidates for bracing might also need surgery. There are different types of surgeries, but the most common one is osteotomy and hemiepiphysoidosis. Regarding the outcome of blunt disease, once the deformity is corrected, most children are able to resume their normal activities without limitations. However, it is important to monitor for worsening deformities or differences in the leg length that may result from this disease. All children, and especially those with Blount's disease, benefit from maintaining a healthy weight because it helps limit the damage to joints over time. This is a short summary of Blount's disease. Thanks for watching.